Welcome to Local Presence, the podcast bringing the smiles back to tendering. Local Presence is pleased to present to you your hosts, Ollie Baines and Joe Webster. Local Presence is a community podcast aiming to share good news in the local area, incorporating fun, laughter and discussion. Here is what is coming up in today's podcast. Local news. We give a social media update. We'll present our interview with a local actress. Competitions and challenges. We'll bring you an events roundup. Plus, we'll be chatting to a member of our local community and much more. But first, here's a roundup of the latest news. The Fat Goose in Tendering has opened a new deli after research suggested the area will benefit. The deli takes up a third of the shop, selling a range of goods from cheeses to pate with a selection of beverages also available. The Fat Goose is also open for afternoon tea, sells home and giftware whilst offering a tuck shop for children. You can see our Facebook page for pictures and more info. Homelands Free Church in Walton and Hampford Academy have together prepared and wrapped 101 shoe boxes to be sent out to Hanadora in Romania this week in time to be distributed to children who otherwise wouldn't have any presents to unwrap this Christmas. Organiser Brian Davis told us that this shoebox scheme is separate to Operation Christmas Child and run by 20 churches from the UK who are sending 12,000 shoeboxes between them. The boxes will arrive at a Christian centre in Hanadura that works with some of the most poor and remote surrounding villages. Brian commented on how good it is to be able to trace the shoeboxes and know exactly where their gifts are going. If anyone's interested in joining in with this next year, let us know at Local Presence and we'll put you in touch with Brian. And also, if your school or workplace has been involved with the Shoebox Appeal or Operation Christmas Child in any capacity this year, do let us know about it. It's all good. Friends Launch Podcast. We are delighted to announce that we have made our debut in this week's Gazette. Well worth the read. Check it out on page 11. Also in the Gazette, Whale I Never. Jay Wick and St. Osef have been privy to some unusual guests on their shores this week. On Tuesday, they welcomed a pod of 40 pilot whales, causing excitement on the beaches. And finally, Frinton Theatre welcomed back actor Richard Wilson. I don't believe it! But this time as a patron of McGregor Hall. The star is most famous for his role in long-running TV series One Foot in the Grave. We're now moving on to a social media update. In our last podcast, we mentioned that Clapton on Sea Twitter account were asking their followers a series of questions. We then asked you, if your area were a film title, what would it be? And our good friend, the Frinton Gent, responded with, Fantastic Frinton, Rise of the Silver Surfer. A valiant effort. Yes, a good effort, and in fact the only effort that we saw (laughs) on social media this week. (laughs) On another front, we have Adam Juice tweeting about his good news. This is the quote. They arrived. Looking forward to training tomorrow. Well, what could he be talking about? Well, the picture that accompanied this tweet helps. And it's a picture of his shiny red and yellow brand new football boots. He's ready to help Fact FC in their season ahead. Fact are an accumulation of different churches in the local area who play in a local church league. May they serve you well, Adam. Indeed. And finally, Josh Baines helpfully tweeted in his good news this week, I saw a pigeon in Frinton at the weekend. (sighs) Ever observant. (laughs) Riveting news, Josh. Thanks for sharing. (laughs) (laughs) So, Joe, we've had some fantastic people on our podcast so far. We've had some really good interviews. Indeed. Who have we talked to this week? This week, we got the chance to interview a local actress called Charlotte Luxford. She's really, really nice, and we had a brilliant interview, and it's very interesting. And she bought us biscuits. She did. That was a real advantage. We liked her from the very beginning. Not that we didn't like our previous interviewees, because we liked them all, but just gave it that edge. That edge, that cookie crumble edge. Mm. You can now hear the full interview on our podcast, so enjoy. Here we are, excited to start our third interview for Local Presence. In the chair this week, we are very privileged to have... Actress Charlotte Luxford. <laughs> hello, Charlotte. Hello. hello. <laughs> I didn't ask you. I didn't say hello to you. Oh, no, I was saying hello to Charlotte. <laughs> oh, right, I was like... <laughs> hello. <laughs> He's going off saying hello to we, me. We already said hello. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, have you had a good day, Charlotte? I have, yes. Thank good. you. You've, yeah, you've been telling us how you've been hoovering. I have, yeah. I, I you know... It's just 
it's too exciting to even yeah. put into words. So glamorous um, all the way. Yeah. <laughs> With your dice in. Yeah. Um, okay, Charlotte, tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, what do I do? Um, I <laughs> I am an actress or actor, whichever you like. Um, so I spend my time. Uh, looking for castings, going to auditions, um, and hopefully being cast in in something. Um, and when I am, that involves going to rehearsals, it involves going to set, it involves, you know, just kind of, yeah, it, it, the job is as it sounds, really. <laughs> is it something you've always wanted to be? Like, you've always aspired to be an actress, or? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I started off when I was about eight years old, kind of doing little bits of stuff. Um, and I was a very painfully shy <laughs> child who wouldn't speak to anybody, wouldn't do anything. So um, I kind of, uh, I think one of my, my primary school teachers said to me, why don't you do this um, and build your confidence up a bit? So I did, and um, that's been my life ever since. <laughs> that's great. So are you looking to do theatre, TV, films, or is it anything, or all of them? Uh, all of them, if I can, if I can get it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been working on sort of theatre things and, and films. While well. I haven't done uh, any kind of TV per se, apart from sort of adverts and stuff. So, um, hopefully, that'll be something to, to do in the future. What adverts have you been in? Um, I did a sport relief one. Did you? And, uh, That's cool. And Burger King. Look as it well. up. Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> What were you doing in the advert? <laughs> I was I was talking to Richard Blackwood, the comedian, and eating a burger very awkwardly in Leicester Square in front of wow. hundreds of people. Can we see That's it on so YouTube? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. If, I know they've done because they they interviewed a number of people um, in the same way, and I think a couple of them have been on. Um, but I don't know. It's probably floating around on YouTube somewhere. I've got to check it out. Yeah, we have to find yeah. it. <laughs> um, what's the most interesting project you've worked on? So far, what's, what have you enjoyed the most? Um, I've enjoyed, I think, probably the most recent thing I've done, which was uh, a short film called The Voice in the Head, which comes out either sort of last bit of this year or sort of early part of next year. Um, and I think that's definitely been the most interesting because it's been the most challenging. So it's it's been a bit of a wild ride. Wow. Were you a lead role in that? I was, yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's good. I've been, I mean, I've been working on that for sort of just over a year now. Wow. Um, so yeah, it'll be a bit exciting to see it. Is that going to be out in cinema, or can we see it anywhere, or is it just a small <laughs> production? Sort of um, thing? Well, I think it's probably going to festivals, um, That's cool. and uh, I don't know, if, uh, probably released online as well. Um, cool. But I think uh, the director's hoping to screen out BAFTA, which would be exciting. Wow. So yeah. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully it lives up to the expectations of <laughs> what I've been doing every day on it so far. So, so how long did you say you're working on it? How many um, months did it take? Well, we we didn't film constantly. It was sort of on and off. Um, I think we did about seven, eight days of filming over the course of a year. But I think I was originally cast in it last summer, uh, sort of August 2013. So, um, and then I had quite a lengthy rehearsal process for it, um, sort of winter of last year, and then uh, filming started in January, and I finished in October. So um, that's that's been a long, a long one. That is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see it. Now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I want to see it. Um, this is just a question that I just thought would be interesting. Maybe not to be used. I don't know. Um, <laughs> if for like getting paid for that kind of project, does it come when the film does well, or does it come like you get a little bit at the start, and then it if it takes off, you get it depends, How does that work? It depends what you do. Um, yeah, it depends on the type of production in the company. So you would tend to get like a basic shoot fee when you're finished. Um, and then um, you might get sort of a little bit sort of afterwards. But usually um, in terms of sort of film and theatre and stuff, it's just a, a basic fee. And then if you have an agent, they'll take commission from you. Um, but obviously if it's a commercial, you get your fee and then you get more money later when it's mm. aired so yeah it depends oh. on what it is so you've always wanted to be an actress yeah. have you had inspirations from anyone and you think oh you know they've really inspired me and want you know yeah um i think probably my favorite uh actors are probably 
Meryl Streep's definitely up yes, there. Yes, Meryl Streep. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, De Niro. Uh, I think Carrie Mulligan's incredible as well. I love her work. Um, so, yeah, they're probably probably my biggest inspiration. I like Meryl Streep. I like her in uh, The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. I love that film. <laughs> That's amazing. Have you got a favourite film? Ooh. Um, I don't know if I have a, a specific favourite film. Mm. There's a lot... There's so many to choose from. Yeah. I, d- I can't pick one. Favourite genre of film? Are you a... I, I love comedy, um, but I also love the really kind of gritty dramas and yeah. you know, that kind of thing as well. So, yeah, that's probably across the board, but I, I do love to laugh, so probably comedy. Cool. <laughs> I like a g- yeah. good uh, chick flick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You've seen you in front of Mean Girls, just... <laughs> yeah. It's true, it happens. Yeah. yeah. Charlotte, this is a big question. Mm. Okay, prepare yourself. Do you feel your school colleagues aided your success? Yes. Yes. I do. <laughs> Correct answer. Well, no, it's true. I mean, everybody's <laughs> been really supportive ever since, you know, day one. So, of course. Good. I was at school with Charlotte and in our drama class. Yep. It That's was, my claim to fame. Great. There you go. Ah, oh, <laughs> that makes me happy. Yeah. I'd be devastated if you said no. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, you know, I'm lying. Um, no, no. I, I was thinking the other day about um, our uh, GCSE rehearsals. Oh my goodness! And you were punting yourself around the room yeah. singing High School Musical <laughs> on an office chair. Was, was that like, part of the what you were asked to no, do? No, was Ollie. We had <laughs> our <laughs> final exam in a week, and Ollie's prancing around the room singing High School Musical. That sounds about right. Yeah. It was my way of just calming down. <laughs> <laughs> It was a stressful time. (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. So where did you study at university and how was that? Um, I studied at Kingston University, um, which I've just graduated from there uh, last week, um, which was exciting. Um, And it was great. Yeah, it was um, it was really fun to meet new people and work with new people and acquire more skills and develop myself as a person at the same time as developing my skills for my job mm-hmm. um, yeah and I I enjoyed the kind of academic side of it of you know the history and the politics of it all as well mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that was it was good it was uh, well what, rounding what was the subject called what was it uh, just drama just drama yeah, yeah okay did you spend a lot of time breathing uh, yes because this is something that <laughs> um, yeah yeah here, learning about acting courses is time to breathe. Yeah, time to breathe. <laughs> and time to like isolate different muscles and like yeah. try and concentrate <laughs> really? on moving. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting. It's uh, it's all about placement as well. We've done a lot of humming exercises where you move the hum around your body and you feel it in the top of your head and your nose and your mm. ears and yeah. Can you demonstrate? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> well, I, I, only you can do it. Like yeah. you oh, okay. You can feel it in yourself. But oh. Otherwise, it's hum in your head. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it here. Really? Yeah. That's but yeah, really cool. we, we do these like trills as well, mm. which which we spent a lot of time like, doing. That is interesting. Yeah. yeah, and like a, like a <laughs> thing as oh, well. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel don't... silly sometimes? You think, what am I doing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Every day of my life. I have no idea. <laughs> That's good though. Is there a lot of competition in acting, drama? Like, do you find... Because you say you have to do like rehearsals and auditions. Mm. Is there a lot of people applying for those? Yes. Um, it's surprising how many people there are, actually. And it's, it's probably... It's, qu- it's quite tough in the sense that it all goes on looks. Um, really? You can be absolutely incredible, but if you don't look right for it, they're not going to cast you. Yeah. Um, so I think competition is even stronger in that way as well. So mm. it's, it's tough. But keep going. If yeah. you're doing it, just keep going. Good advice. <laughs> Good, yeah. yeah. That was going to be my next question. Like, what would you give to someone who is aspiring to be like, an actor? Yeah, I think uh, be sure that it's what you want to do, and just just keep going because if you persevere with it, then it's an incredible career to have. Um, and don't give up. Just develop develop rhino skin <laughs> and you know just people will insult you people will knock you down people will reject you but you can't let any of that bother you so mm. just keep going kind of surmises our last question there like, yeah you already said it um 
Can we move to a local focus? Yeah. Do you feel happy at this? Sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you say no. The end, it ends. Yeah. No. Uh, what's your favourite part of tendering? Ooh. Um, Where do you live, actually? Might be a better place to start. I live in Kirby Cross. Classic. Um, yeah. Mm. And my favourite part, probably Frinton Beach. Because, I mean, it's my, it's my home, you know? Mm. It's... And I, I, weirdly, I love the little garden bit at the end of Corner Avenue with the telephone oh, box. Oh, yeah. I love it in there. It's so cosy. Oh, uh, yes, I know you. Yeah, just at the end. With a little water fountain yeah, in there as well. Yeah, yeah. That is quite good, isn't it? It's really cute. When so, you're yeah. famous and a multi-trillionaire, will you come back to Frinton? Yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's my home, yeah. you know. It's, mm the place to be so. I just love it yeah. I, I don't want to move away <laughs> soft spot where do you like to go with friends in the local area ooh in the local area um, I really enjoy going to Dedham and going on the mm. and Flatford over yeah. there Flatford Mill um, that's really really nice and the beach again as well mm. um, yeah I think probably those Good places choice. yeah there. I love Dedham Mm. And Flatford. Do you go boating? Uh, once or twice I've been, yeah. yeah. And sort of picnics amongst, yes. amongst the cows, yeah. which seem to be yeah. roaming freely. <laughs> <laughs> they are quite funny. Yeah. We'd be fans of Christmas, me and Joe. We love it. Are you looking forward to Christmas? Yes. Why did I you think? hesitate? Because it's so close and I oh. didn't realise how close it was. Oh, no. Until just now. Are you ill prepared? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm so far behind. Every year I'm like, I'm going to be done by the end of November. It's, <laughs> it's going to be great and I am not on track by a long way. Um, yeah. But I, d- I did see the, the Christmas Coca Cola advert this morning and I got very excited. What did you think? I haven't seen it yet. They're just. They're just the best. They are oh, Christmas yeah. to me. Yeah. That's what they mm. that's what they are. When it's on telly, you know it's coming. Yeah. What have you asked for for Christmas this year? Anything particularly? Um nothing in particular. I think I I think I asked my mum for a new handbag, because mine is very broken. <laughs> um, so <laughs> all that travelling around to auditions. Yeah, exactly. So um yeah, it's it's it was on its last legs, so Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. What do you miss about TTC? The people. Yeah. I, yeah, the people. I like seeing everybody every day and that sense of um, community that was always mm. there. I think that's that's one thing I miss. Yeah, definitely. I, I just miss waking up in the mornings and like putting my school uniform on and <laughs> going down there and, and, and learning things that seem totally irrelevant at the yep. time but you know it's great are they still irrelevant no Good. no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> we um have been following a character on twitter called the frinton gentleman mm-hmm. he's um a bit of a mystery one yeah. of a kind uh, and yeah we were just wondering firstly if you are the frinton gentleman <laughs> no i'm not the frinton well she's an actress so yeah, she, that's can hide it. she can hide yeah <laughs> i'm definitely not do you know who he is? No. Have you been aware of this I, figure? I have, yeah. I've, I've seen him tweeting. And, uh, no, I don't know who it is. He's very good, though. I quite like his style. Yeah, it's very... It's, it's amusing. <laughs> it is. Part of me doesn't actually want to find out, though. No. Yeah. I think he would ruin it. Yeah. It's so, well done for telling us you're not the printed gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Before we finish, we've got a quick fire round. Ooh, okay? okay? Take a deep breath. <sighs> Good. Okay, right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Pens or pencils? Pencil. Really? Yeah. You can ah. rub it out if you make a mistake. Oh, that's good. Yeah. True. We didn't think of that. Prepare. She's an artist of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> actor or actress? Oh, actor. Local or presence? Uh, presence. Walking or cycling? Walking. Sweets or chocolate? Oh, chocolate. Winter or summer? Summer. Shoelaces or Velcro? <laughs> I love a bit of Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook or Twitter? Uh, I hate both, but Facebook. <laughs> podcast or vlog? Oh, podcast. And the final one. Joe, do you want to ask it? <laughs> I will ask it, but I won't take any credit for coming up with this question. 
Would you rather have hair as nails or a nail as your hair? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, now think about this one. So your fingernails are <laughs> <is a> hair? <laughs> Technically they are hair though. Yeah, well that is true. But yeah. they're actually, your hair, like, your hair on your head, you've got on your fingernails. Mm. And your your hair is now one big nail, but it's you can like, you can chisel it and make it like into a different it's style a nail if you want. Cap. But it might hurt someone if you like. <laughs> I'm gonna say the nail on my head because then I can paint it and do all sorts of funky styles with it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been brilliant to chat to you, and thank you so much for coming for the interview. Is there thank anything you. you'd like to say as we close? Um, you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. I'm loving this podcast. I've been listening every week. Like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She got the script right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been great. Thanks yeah. for coming on, Charlie. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah. Oh, what's your Twitter name, Charlie, so people can follow you and see what you're up to? <laughs> um, it is Luxfordian. Oh. Don't ask. It's, yeah, it wasn't my choice. <laughs> so make yeah, sure you keep Fordian. up to date with what Charlie's doing on Twitter. I'm sure you'll be posting up lots of different things, I exciting things. Yes. Yeah. Um, but thanks for coming on. No, thank it's you. Been great to have you. Thank you so much again, Charlotte, for that interview. We really, really enjoyed having you and we look forward to seeing how you progress. Definitely. Make sure you come back when you're like a multi-trillionaire. Yeah. And we can interview them. Or whip out this one and be like, we interviewed her before anyone else. Yeah, <laughs> and when that film comes out, we could, we could review it. Yes, let's definitely review it. Be a good idea. We're now moving on to our competitions and challenges section. And what's been happening this week, Ollie? So we had a Where Are We challenge, and the winner was Andrew McKenzie, who correctly guessed it as we were in Wheelie McDonald's. Um, Paul Woods was close. He, uh, he, he, yeah. he guessed just after Andrew. Yeah, he got the right guess. He did. He and, did. Uh, we have Rob Parsons who also guessed Clacton McDonald's, which was obviously not the right answer, but very close being that it's still McDonald's. Uh, the competition probably lasted about half an hour this week. Not even so. that, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, yeah. We're leading to a false sense of security because we're making them easy and think yeah. you, know, you can win it, but this week we've, we've really gone to yeah, town. It's going to be a more difficult challenge that we're going to present to you. So, in the interest of making it slightly harder this week, we've decided to not share a picture, but to share with you a riddle, people of Tendering. We would like you to, to see if you can crack this one and decipher where we are from the clue of this riddle. Ollie, would you read us the riddle? I shall. Goods arrive, they come and go, all year round, rain or snow. Ooh. Where are we? I'll read it again. Yeah. Goods arrive... They come and go, all year round, rain or snow. Mm. Where are we? <laughs> have to get your thinking caps on. Yeah. <laughs> for that. I hope it's harder. And it must people... be harder. I think it's tough, even though I know the answer. I hope it'll last longer than half an hour, and we'll get a few different comments and tweets. and. Yeah, so please, if you do think you know the answer, guess. But leave it an hour. <laughs> well, they can guess, and we don't have to reveal the winner like straight away. No. We can leave people hanging. Hanging. Yes, that's what? the solution. Uh, uh. Returning to a slot that we introduced last week, we would like to present you with a Did You Know? So, we've got a fun fact for you regarding our area. Ollie's going to present this fact. What have we got? <laughs> Joe, did you know that Hollywood film star Clive Owen lives in the tendering area? I didn't know this. Now you do. Now I do. So, what films has he been in? He's been in Inside Man. He's been in The Bourne Identity. I saw one of the Bournes. Was he in all of them or just one? I do, do you know, I don't know. I haven't actually seen many of the Bournes. Oh. I, I haven't seen the Bournes. He's, def he's in Inside Man. He's like the main character in that. Okay. And he's been in um, King Arthur. I didn't see that one. He was King Arthur. Oh, right. So, okay, he so was... Big uh, part. He is a big part. Do you reckon he's listening to local presents? He should be. Yeah. Whether he is, I'm not sure, but we'll he definitely to, should be. We'll have to link him. If he's on Twitter, we could tweet him in this. Yes. Yes. Clive Owen. Coming. <laughs> We're coming for you. We're coming for you. <laughs> okay. We now bring another new section to our podcast. This is where we're going to be talking about upcoming events in our community. If you have anything you think we'd be interested in or would like to get the word out about, then please let us know for future podcasts. But as for today... 
I am really excited to say that we have Jane Gibson with us live at Local Presence and Jane is going to tell us a bit more about her exciting event coming up. Jane, what is your event? Um, We've got a big event at the Triangle Shopping Centre just outside the gates and that's for music school giving um, a concert of Christmas music, stuff they've been practising over the last few weeks and we bill it as the end of term concert so we invite family and friends and obviously public will be there as well we hope Mm -hmm. to enjoy the children's Christmas music and a few soloists and raise a little bit of money for the music school as well with tombolas etc. Fantastic. So who's actually involved? Who are the students? Who? Where's the school? Um, it's Harwich Royal British Legion Brass Band Music School. A bit of a mouthful, I'm afraid. Mm. But it was uh, formed from members of the Harwich uh, Royal British Legion main band, um, branching off and opening up a music school ten years ago for um, local children who are keen on learning a brass instrument. Right. There was a, a need for that. Yeah. Um, that took off and we're now <laughs> celebrating our 10th year. And it's open for children and adults of any age, any ability, beginners, intermediate, um, and they can come along on a Tuesday evening at Chase Lane Primary School in Dover Court. Uh, goes from five till seven, is for the beginners and then from seven till half past eight is the more advanced players. Um, Cost seven pounds for an evening, so 35 pounds for a five week half term, which is how we operate. Um, And yeah, they get a free instrument. Um, They get an hour's band with all together in a beginner's band. They get a half an hour individual lesson and a half an hour theory lesson. Wow, that's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, sounds sounds like a good package. So how long have you been involved? Um, I joined in the September 2005, so just under the 10 years, okay. um, and I joined because my son joined, and I, he joined in the January of that year, um, and I just used to take him over to Harwich, sit in the car for three hours and wait for him to finish, um, and they had an open afternoon on, in July, and said, would anyone else like to join? I already knew music, I used to play flute mm. when I was at secondary school, um, so it was just a case of learning the brass instrument. I yeah. say just a case of learning the brass <laughs> It is quite hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> and very different from learning the flute. So, And I've really enjoyed it. And I'm now part of the main band. Brilliant. And I've taken what I've learnt back to the music school. Um, it helped Peter and my son. It helped myself. Um, and I wanted to give something back. So that's why I'm now a teacher. I'm actually secretary of the music school now. Wow. So I've given back what they gave to me and enjoy my time in the main band as well. Great. Okay doing concerts and things. What brass instrument was it you played on? I play the baritone, which is like a mini tuba. Is it quite bassy? No. Oh, it just sounds like it might be. Yeah, It's it's more of a tenor instrument. It's Ah, it's similar kind of sounding to a trombone. Mm -hmm. Great. So why should people come along to your event? Just to have some fun, listen to some music, see how well the children are getting on in their learning, um, to support us and just to enjoy a Christmas event. Brilliant. And is there anything else you would like to say? Um, Yes, in the 10th year, which we're starting now, um, we've got quite a few events coming up for the next year. Uh, We've got a concert at Ramsey Church. We've got, and that's on the uh, 10th of February. We'll have um, a 10-year celebration concert on the 4th of April, which is when we're going to invite all past members back and have like a big jamming session with people who might still play if they don't still play years later they can still pick up an instrument and have fun yeah. and and then a mini concert by the band that are you know, current at the moment and then we're having a bandstand concert in Dover Court at the bandstand there on the 7th of July so they're things that we've organised for our 10th year celebrations um, so I'll, we'll um, we have a website that will go on the website and I'll put it on Facebook as well. So great. People want to so there are contact us. details for people who want to get yeah. in touch. Yeah. Excellent. It sounds great. Yeah, lots of things going on. That's really exciting. And we've, the reason we started it is we wanted to give people a life learning skill, you know, a, yeah. a skill that they've got for life and that's what music does and it gives mm. them a great social time. It's Definitely. great team building and it's just a, it's a great fun thing to do and it's part of the good news of Tendoon District, Definitely. if you like, Definitely. that um, they can come along and enjoy music and, and have fun with it, you know, playing with other people yeah. and playing as a part of a big group. Sounds like good news to me. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks for coming Thank along, Thank you so Jane. much. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Good news. Love it.
Joe, it's that time in our podcast where we're going to be chatting to a member of our local community. So the first week we spoke to Hayley Radley. Last week we spoke to Helen Churchill. And this week, Joe, who are we speaking to? We're going to be speaking to Daniel Thurston. He lives in... Walton. Cross? Walton. Walton. Yeah, Walton. Yeah, it is Walton. Yeah. Tense. Hi, Joe. Hi, Dan. It's Joe and Ollie here. You all right? Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. Are you free to talk for a minute? Yeah, of course. Are you okay to be on our local presence podcast? You're live, Dan. You've got no choice, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. Succumbs to it. Oh. So we've, we've got a few questions we'd like to ask you, if that, if that sounds okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, starting off with, what's your favourite thing about tendering? Tendering? Um, the roads. Really? <laughs> the roads are absolutely fantastic. Apart from the potholes. Yeah. It's yeah. Brilliant. Potholes are not so good. Brilliant driving roads around here. That's good. In your mm. van. The country roads. Yeah, the country roads. They're brilliant. Anyone in particular? Yeah. The road to Harwich. <laughs> that actually, that is quite a good road, to be fair. Yeah. That is not bad. I love that road. Dan, second question. Have you got any good news you'd like to share with local presence? Good news? Um, oh. No, no, I haven't <laughs> really. Um, Have you had a good day? Uh, Jesus loves you. Oh, that's ah, good. That's a good. Jesus piece. loves you. That's good news. We like that. <laughs> right, Dan, we're going to be doing a quick fire round, which we've been doing with all of our call-ins. Okay, so you've got eight questions. You've got to answer them as quick as you can. Uh, there's no score. We're not going to keep track of what you're saying. Just, yes, like, you've got to choose one or the other. You can't be wrong. Okay, Joe's going to ask you the questions, all right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you ready, Dan? Yep. Okay. Flumps or falafel? Flumps. Eggs or bacon? Bacon. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Cheese on toast with ketchup or pineapple chunks? Oh, oh pineapple chunks. <laughs> Cameron Diaz or Jennifer Aniston? Who did you say it again? Cameron Diaz or Jennifer Aniston? Cameron Diaz. Bass guitar or drums? Eat in or take away? Take. Eat in. Eat in or take away? Eat in. Local or presence? Presence. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Right. We're just going to add your score just up, Dan. Just the score, Ollie. What we got let's here? Let's have a look. Uh, Dan, you got two. Two right. Yeah, two you got, right, you yeah. got two correct answers there. <laughs> Out of eight. How do you feel about that? Doesn't even know. Can't put it into words. Can't put it into words. Lost for words. Yeah, you got two out of eight there, Dan. Which... I'm so happy to be on the podcast. <laughs> oh, well, brilliant. Well, we were going to ask you, is there anything that you'd like to say before we leave you? Oh, is there anything I'd like to say? Um, to tendering on our podcast. Fill in the potholes. <laughs> fill in the potholes. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Dan. It's been great That's to chat right. to you. And we'll see you no soon. Problem. Cheers, Dan. Yeah. Love Bye. you. Bye. <laughs> Brilliant. That was good. <laughs> as we round off another podcast, we've got a few thank yous to make as is tradition. We'd like to thank Charlotte once again for coming in for that interview. We'd like to thank Dan Thurston for coming on our show. And we'd like to thank Jane. Thank you, Jane. And a special thanks to our hosts. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome, Ollie. Thank you, Ollie. You're welcome. <laughs> music. Cutie music. Music.